Remember how I said this controversy was basically going to be dead in a few days? Well, I can't think of a more telling sign of that than the fact that Jim Sterling has finally addressed it. After all, you can't exactly call yourself a lively channel if you're losing 100,000 subs in as little as 9 months. But nevertheless, I was waiting for this for about a week or so because I knew it was going to be a fucking disaster. I mean, it didn't exactly take a fucking genius for that. This is the same Jim Sterling that can't even critique the Activision merger without bringing up the fact that British people are going to be annoyed by their chattering fucked up teeth even more this winter. But nevertheless, here we are. And well, I did this little shit post where I said that you could decide whether I actually respond to this or not, and you all hate me enough to want this, so fuck it. We're going for it. However, I'm skipping over this little intro skit where she's going over a fucking Harry Potter hate fic about not having the modern amenities. Trust me, I ain't got the patience for this and neither will you by the end of it, so here we go. I, li I don't care that the one shop is Olivia Newton-Johns. I don't give a fuck. I didn't even want to do this episode. I've known it's coming for a year, but I don't want to have to talk about fucking Hogwarts. Alright, I know I said I'd skip over the intro skip, but I just gotta touch on this one little bit here at the end. If you knew it was coming and you knew you didn't want to do it, don't fucking do it, bitch. Like, for fuck's sake, I know one of my friends, he was probably waiting on me to rip into the fucking Ruby Justice League whatever fucking shit show that's gonna be. I took one look at the trailer and I was like, yeah, this is so boring, I can't make anything funny out of this, I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna watch the movie, obviously, I'm just not gonna do any video on it, no matter what. And I told him all my reasons in a Discord conversation, so, yeah. Problem solved there. I'd ask why the fuck you couldn't practice some of that energy on yourself, but of course, why would I expect that? Eh, I guess I shouldn't complain since it's free content, but still. Right? I made my peace with the Harry Potter series. I made my peace a long time ago. But it's inevitable. It's here, and we've got to talk about it. We really wouldn't have to talk about it if the fucking extremists that made this controversy into such a big fucking thing in the first place would have kept their mouths shut and would have practiced a little bit of common sense, but that's expecting too much of them. So, here we go. The fucking wizard game. Uh, warning, of course, for what you're about to see. Uh, there's going to be a lot of transphobic rhetoric uh, that I have to show you uh, in order to talk about some of this shit. Oh, oh, scary! Oh, 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 shiver my timbers! Shut up, man! Or he could just, you know, leave it at the game itself, talk about its qualities, talk about the dumbasses that are making mountains out of molehills, and mainly point and laugh at the people that are trying to compare Jews to goblins, and act like they're not the fucking anti-Semitic ones. You know, that's always an option. But, of course, we got a virtue signal so loud that the echo chamber starts to crack from it. So, prepare thyself. So, let's talk about J.K. Rowling, let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy, and let's talk about how allyship really works. Oh, I'm just so glad that we ain't gonna see this fucking awful corset again. But by any chance, if this god-awful look of hers, his whatever's, comes up again, you can rest assured I'm gonna replace the video with a bunch of random shit. Capiche? Capiche. J.K. Rowling is a transphobe. Okay. And that's her choice. And even if you do interpret all this bullshit as transphobic and such, whoop de doo Like, I legit don't understand why anyone would take anything out of J.K. Rowling's mouth seriously after that whole controversy she made back in, what, 2018-whatever, when she suddenly decided to play revisionist history and make Hermione a black person, and there were more Jews, yada yada, in Harry Potter. Like, after all that, I'd just laugh J.K. off and leave it at that. Because, I mean, at that point, she's just having fun with her own IP. Because, I mean, why not have a little fun like that? Whatever you gotta do to make your retirement from life a little bit more entertaining. This is a fact. It's a fact I've never seen disputed in good faith, only challenged by fellow transphobes who have a pre-baked line since these people read from the same script. What did she say, exactly, that's transphobic? A pretty fair question, since from what bare-bones research I've done on the subject, it seems like she just wants basic women's rights to be enshrined, just like any activist in history has picked and choose whatever rights they want above all others. So how about you give us the answer here, Jim Bella? Rowling couches her hatred in plausible deniability, but her daily obsessive takes on us, her constant comparisons of trans women to men, her verbatim repetition of gender-critical talking points makes her feelings clear. You know, Jim, you've always had a knack of sucking whenever it comes to pulling up tweets as evidence for whatever talking points you want to talk about. Like, fuck, my buddy talked about that one situation where uh, he was talking about Scott Cawthon and the whole Five Nights at Freddy's situation years ago, and they couldn't even show the fucking Twitter handle, so how do you know the tweets even existed, so... But here, they're trying to make a big deal out of these transphobic tweets here and such, and... <laughs> it's pretty fucking clear they didn't even read them. Because all Rowling is saying in this one is that gender confirmation certificates are now being granted without any need for surgery or hormones. 
In other words, they're skipping parts of the process for actual ethical transitions. And there's no lie there because, yeah, there's kind of a rise in people not going the professional way about transitioning. Which I'm sure we're not going to talk about later. Nope, not at all. So nice job proving that J.K. Rowling just wants people to, you know, go through it ethically. Oh my god, such a monster. She follows, is best friends with, and outright claims to be one of the many prominent TERFs, trans-exclusive radical feminists these days rebranded to gender criticals. Her slide into open fascism as a result has been horrifying. She is a fan of Matt Walsh, a fascist so into fascism that he self-describes as one and has made a career from accusing LGBTQ plus people of the very pedophilia he himself seems to be a fan of. I swear I've heard this backwards ass logic that because someone is a fan of someone who says something regarding pedophilia, that must mean this other person is a fan of pedophilia too. But I can't remember where I might have heard that before, huh? Remember this, Rich? You say, I'm gonna say it. I'm a fan of Vosh V. Deal with it. Now, me being a total outsider to the situation, I had to do a little research. I don't know what the hell this is all about. What the hell is, who, what is a Vosh V? I don't know anything about it. Come to find out this is another YouTuber that had a live stream where he was pro pedophilism and, you know, lowering the age of consent, targeting our children. Coincidence, I guess. In any way, I highly Highly doubt that Rowling is a fan of Matt for those views, rather, views on certain other subjects. And even then, being a fan of someone doesn't mean you support every single view they have. And from what little I've seen, Rowling has had fuck all to say on this subject, so I don't know why you're even bringing this up when it has very little to do with her. Oh yeah, guilt by association, we're going with that cancer. Nice. She's liked tweets from the abjectly abhorrent libs of TikTok account. Oh god, liking tweets. That means she's just one step away from donating money to this person and whatever views they have that are so controversial. My god, what is the world coming to? How could you, Rowling? A notorious right-wing platform that outs queer people and is used to organize attacks against drag shows as well as threats against hospitals. She retweets unscientific drivel by queer phobes like Baroness Nicholson. She stands with Maya Forstatter, who, after losing her job at a progressive organization over demeaning anti-trans comments, has dedicated her life to combating trans rights. Again, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that you don't even read these tweets that you're putting up in your video here. Or fuck, it's not even you doing it, it's your fucking editors, but still. Because Rowling's take on this is pretty fucking based. If you want to live your life the way you want to, go for it. But don't force people out of their jobs just for stating scientifically proven facts. And like I said, Rowling is picking and choosing women in this one, but still, it applies to literally everyone. She's literally standing up for an injustice. Golf claps. And as for the Maya Shah whatever her fucking name is, and how she's now campaigning against the trans people, oh well. That should be between you and the ballot box and has absolutely nothing to do with rallying. The most she did was make this one defense, and then never again. She once sent accidental transphobic profanity to a nine-year-old girl after pasting a comment from an anti-trans website she was reading and copying at the time. Alright, I've had just about enough of this bullshit bringing up all these random ass things that rallying has done, especially when this one is a fucking accident, as you said. Holy shit. So yeah, I'm gonna skip over the rest of this cringe because I'm getting sick of it already. And she is obsessive. Scroll through her Twitter and you'll find that she thinks about trans people all day, every day. Nah, I think I'd rather use my time doing something a little more productive than scrolling through someone else's Twitter. Just for random ass examples that we can take out of context. But hey, you do you, and I'll tell you what, I'll throw you a little bone here. Since you like bringing up all these things that Rowling supposedly supports and is a fan of, she happily donates to Doctors Without Borders. What do you guys say to that? Are the doctors now transphobe for accepting that money? Should people not go and seek out medical help out of fear of being labeled a transphobe over stupid shit? On second thought, I shouldn't really joke about that. That'd be the only way we'd ever see actual equality here. At first, she tried to keep up the mask of someone who supports trans people but just has concerns and wanted to protect women's spaces, a long-time gender-critical dog whistle. Ah, there it is. My least favorite word to use in this entire subject, dog whistle. Because God forbid people have concerns over things that are pretty fucking fair and evident. Again, from everything you've shown, Rowling has fair and just concerns over things that have happened, such as women being assaulted in bathrooms by trans people. Something I can relate with because that's happened in my workplace a few times actually. Where one day a man will just randomly decide he'll dress up as a woman and go into the woman's bathroom. And when the women rightfully complain about him, you know, not lifting the toilet seat up before he takes a piss in the toilet and such, then he assaults them or creeps them out in other varying ways. 
Like, yeah, it happens. And people are concerned about that, and they have good reason to. I'm not saying that all trans people are going to do that, obviously. That's like saying all black people are going to walk into a store and steal something. Statistics show that yes, that does happen quite a lot, and there's reason for concerns of it, but it's not every single one. She claimed her liking of transphobic tweets was just her finger slipping. Jesus fuck, are we still complaining about the fact that she likes tweets? Holy shit, this controversy keeps getting even more desperate. The more I find out about it. Honest, and now she's an ardent supporter of Helen Joyce. While we're, while we're trying to get through to the decision makers, we have to try to limit the harm. And that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. Every one of those people is basically, you know, a huge problem to a sane world. Like if you've got people, that, and whether they're transitioned, whether they're happily transitioned, whether they're unhappily transitioned, whether they're detransitioned, if you've got people who've dissociated from their sex in some way, every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation. Every one of them is a difficulty. Now, as you might have guessed, I don't know the full context of this, and I know damn well Jim has taken this out of context in some way, shape, or form, as the track record is proven. But as for that first comment about keeping the number down of transitions and such like that, all they're preaching for is more ethical means of it, and regulating it just a bit more. It's on the same level as people that campaign for a bit more stricter abortion guidelines and such. Because just like abortion, some people don't like the fact that women can just walk in, say, hey, I want an abortion, and the next thing you know, they got it aborted just because they had a fight with their boyfriend or whatever. And yes, that's something that's happened in quite a few people that I know's life. And a little bit of regulation on that front would be nice. Same thing with people, you know, wanting it and wanting it done ethically instead of, you know, sticking a coat hanger in themselves. I know this is a little weird that I'm going into abortion when we're talking about trans people and such, but it's the same principle. All they're wanting is a little bit more ethical and secure transitions, that way they can make it a little bit easier for the next time they have someone else who wants to transition. All this Helen Joyce, whatever the fuck her name is, is asking for is an easier time for the medical professionals who have to work on the trans people. Oh my god, such a horror. That's at least what I'm getting from it. But I'm sure I'm just transphobic for not accepting the fact that being against trans in any way means you're against them wholesale. That someone JK Rowling agrees with platforms is a friend of, indeed, the people Rowling champions are fucking monsters. Or they just have some legitimate concerns. And you could, you know, ease them if you have a civil conversation instead of spurging the fuck out like this. And blowing up the extremists who say, fuck all the trannies. But once again, we're going by guilt by association, so of course we're gonna go all over the fucking place on this. And I'm gonna skip over the rest of this, because I've made my point pretty fucking clear. Her slimy, cowardly behavior goes back years. What's shown in this video so far is just from stuff I started collecting in the past year because I knew this subject was inevitable. While she's been careful enough not to use plainly direct hate speech, I don't think her deniability is close to plausible anymore. Probably because you've been reaching more than a fucking limo at this point. Because again, all I'm seeing is legitimate concerns that could be, you know, thoughtfully debated about. Look at the lies she tells, the fascists she supports. Look at how much she talks about us. This is not what someone who doesn't loathe us does. This is the activity of someone with a genuine, deep-seated problem. If that's the way you actually interpret this, have a conversation with her. Break it down why she's wrong in a civil manner. Critique her points instead of complaining, Ah, transphobe because it is one supporter of yours, or, or this one thing that you like that someone else said. Boo fucking who? Also, I'm 99% sure she wouldn't be talking about the trans people as much if she didn't have so many of them constantly coming to her, complaining about the same nothing burgers, but hey, that's just my two cents. You don't have to believe me. You can believe the Harry Potter cast members who've condemned her. You can believe the historians who've catalogued a clear timeline of her descent into frothing bigotry. Or, if you'd rather, believe the Republican politicians who are actually citing her words in their anti-LGBTQ plus legislative efforts. Believe the virulently right-wing male supremacy group Honey Badgers who call JKR their queen. Believe the photos of her at GC meetings. Believe the trans-exclusionary women's shelter she set up to replace the trans-inclusive women's shelter that her movement bullied and harassed out of operation. And that's three times and we are out of here with this whole guilt by association trip. Because, well, yeah, you can believe the actors that have said, yeah, that's fucked up for her to say. And some of my friends have even said she said some fucked up things. I'll take their word for it that maybe she has said some fucked up things about trans people. And maybe she does have some things that need to be worked out. From everything I'm seeing, though, I'm more than willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. 
especially since the alternative is guilt by association again. Since all of Jim's examples on the other side are things that other people have said, other people quoting her, other people saying that she's a queen that totally can't be a joke at all. No, not whatsoever. Or the fact that she supported a charity that just so happened to be more well-liked than the alternative. How dare she, I know. Or maybe you just believe JK Rowling when she says, it is dangerous to assert that any category of people deserves a blanket presumption of innocence. She's exactly right. People shouldn't be given the blanket presumption of innocence. Yes, I do believe in the concept of innocent until proven guilty when someone is accused of committing a crime, but that's not what we're talking about here. Instead, all she's saying is that there should be no one above any form of critique, which she's right on. I don't care if someone's white, trans, black, gay, or even a fucking alien. At the end of the day, we're all human, and humans are shitty to each other, so... It's not exactly an unfair concept. Hell, she even says it in this tweet that you're quoting right here. How did your editors miss this? They have to be trolling you at this point, Jim. She's outright saying that this kind of extremist behavior is something that you would hear from fascists like the fucking Nazis. Holy shit, you are so fucking dumb, Jim. <laughs> she meant trans people, of course. But if she's right, then hell, she gets no presumption either. She is a turf, loud and proud, merry turfmas, as she would say. Cope, seethe, and mauled. She has her views that you disagree with. Challenge them like an adult with actual thoughtful critique, or keep bitching and moaning. <laughs> But while good things happened, and to be honest, 90% of people really don't care if I'm trans or not, there are negatives. Firstly, there's going to be negatives no matter what choice you have in life, no matter what it is. So this is in no way special. I don't know why you're trying to make it out to be. Secondly, let's hear that number again of how many people don't really care. But while good things happened, and to be honest, 90% of people really don't care if I'm trans or not, to be honest, 90% of people... Wow, a whopping 10% actually care about the fact that you're a trans female. God, we really just gotta be so concerned over that 10% that say stupid shit on the internet. My heart actually bleeds for you. It's no secret what it did to my career. Ah, and there's my other favorite lie of Jim's of how their career has supposedly been dead because of them coming out as trans. Yeah, cute story, guess what, the numbers prove it wrong. Their decline happened a year before them coming out as trans. And it was in fact because of their outward hostility towards the audience. Something that no YouTuber should ever do. Something that is going to fuck your channel over. And the only way it's ever not gonna fuck you over is if eventually you change course. Like fucking Implem, and he eventually bit back at his audience. It tanked his channel for a while. But then he course corrected. He rebounded. He made better content than what he was. And he evolved as a person. Unlike you, Jim, you're just the same bitter old bitch stuck in the past. Only instead of turning your hostility towards the game industry and all the corruption within it, you turn it on your own audience. There's no better sign of someone shooting themselves in the foot than that. The way in which I'm criticized online changed. Suddenly I was diagnosed by commenters as mentally ill, my age comes up a lot now, and my writing is tone policed, accused of being rude and screeching where it wasn't before. Because it is. There's a very noticeable difference between Jim from five years ago and Jim from now. And many people will agree, it's for the worse. And again, it's online comments. So fucking bad. Such a bad consequence of being trans. Oh my god. I don't know how you've survived for two years. Oh, I, my heart's still just so bleeding, it's taking away my voice. Holy shit, Jim. I hope you can recover eventually. I hope this all works out well in the end. But most of all, the world has become scarier. Scarier because of the right-wingers calling us all groomers and engaging in violence against us. Crazy thought here, maybe they wouldn't be calling you that if so many of your events didn't specifically want children involved. Just, just a little food for thought there. Also, if there was more pushback within your community from, you know, pieces of shit like Keffels who openly let minors engage with pedophiles, and have also been on record scamming children out of thousands of dollars for bathtub-made medicines for their unethical transitions. You know, if it wasn't for that, I think the groomer allegations would come down just a Bit, you know, just a tiny bit. Scarier because of the GOP and Tories scapegoating us and legislating our rights away with increased ferocity. Welcome to the real world of politics where literally every human being is being fucked over in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't matter if they're black, white, trans, whatever. If you want to see some kind of improvement, make better choices when you vote. That's step one of fixing the problem. Step two is, you know, a few fixes we need to do, like getting rid of super PACs and such like that, but. Eh, that's a topic for another time, but that's step one. 
we gotta start somewhere. Scarier because of media outlets like the BBC engaging in transphobia as a matter of policy. Scarier because of the people JKR has emboldened with her support. The gender criticals who preach eugenics and partake in phrenology to call for our eradication. Scarier because culturally and legally and increasingly physically, we've been staring down the barrel of genocide for a long, long time. If mean words on the internet and a few strict laws are all it takes to cause a fucking genocide these days, then in this one, I don't think you need to worry about them up in the ante anymore. At this rate, it'll be a self-imposed genocide. If you're not trans, if you're not so aware of how there's a new attack on us and our rights multiple times a day, every day, you won't quite know how bad it is. That's a little thing called human prejudice. It's nothing new, and there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop it other than not being prejudiced yourself. For example, I hate everyone, I think everyone's a stupid shit, I know I'm a stupid shit, and I'm more than willing to critique their points rather than something I can't change like their skin color or what type of genitals they like to suck on. And so far it's working out pretty well for me, so... yeah. It's horrific. It's exhausting. We're less than 2% of the population, but we're called an epidemic. We're demonized in the press with extremely disproportionate coverage, and wealthy, powerful people like JKR can't stop thinking about us. Look, some people might be delighted to hear this from me, but I'm going to admit it plainly. I'm afraid. I'm really, really afraid. <laughs> and every day, for months, I've seen a video game that directly benefits one of the largest sources of that fear promoted on the PlayStation Store and Xbox Live, hyped up by the gaming press and championed by a community with a long-running vein of transphobia running through it that goes back to the hateful protests against a bit part trans NPC in Dragon Age Inquisition. I have no comment whatsoever on that absolute drivel about the Dragon Age NPC, but last time I checked it was the trans activists and such that kept making a big deal out of this that kept saying so many people were going to be transphobic, that kept begging people not to buy it, not to play it. Meanwhile, the actual trans people that benefit from donations to things like the Trevor Project and such, well, they haven't cared, because they know it's just a fucking video game. And, unlike you, they've been able to figure out that rallying has absolutely nothing to do with this game. She'll get $10 for every 10,000 copies they sell, or whatever the fucking number is. It ain't that much. Every day, a constant reminder that we as trans people have so few friends, so few allies. Every day, a reminder that the game industry and community are contemptuous. I actually think that this entire controversy just made the biggest fucking enemies of the trans community and such. And I don't mean that gamers are gonna rise up against the fucking trans people, no. Nor is it specifically against trans people in their entirety. Just the extremists that made this into such a big fucking deal. Because gamers, I know that's such a fucking cringe word to say like this, but it's the only one that's coming to mind. But gamers happen to have a pretty well documented track record for coming together to fix major issues with whatever game or company they saw fit. It wasn't always successful. But for the few times that it was, it either resulted in a game being completely changed and made for the better, or the game was completely destroyed just because people stopped playing and stopped supporting it. All because they were able to come together in a unison. And there's also the fact that they're willing to pay exorbitant amounts of money just to feel more special about themselves. Kind of like the people that buy into the Keffel scam. Yes, I'm not going to let that shit go. I could go on and on about this whole thing, but I don't think I will. Let's just leave it at you really fucked up by getting the gamers against the fucking trans activists at this point. Like, I don't think there's going to be a bigger L than that. But that's just my two cents.